Hey folks, Kayak DIY here, and right now I'm hanging out on the Sun Dolphin Boss 12 SS. Just a second here. I'm gonna get some stuff ready here. So right now hanging out on the Sun Dolphin Boss 12 SS. This was a request by many viewers. They wanted me to talk about it, and I figured this way you'd get an unedited response from me so you could ask whatever you want in regards to this particular kayak and I'll try to tell you so I took this kayak out yesterday and I did a little bit of fossil hunting and right now I'm in my canal and I'm with my dog and so ooh, that's a so right here is the Sun Dolphin Boss okay so it's pretty affordable my thoughts so far there's some areas that could be improved on but for the money i would buy one now what i want to make clear right in the beginning of this video is i got this one for free sun dolphin gave it to me i get tons of kayaks to review and to test i couldn't possibly buy them all but i want you to know that i take into consideration the cost and the price of the kayaks when I go to review them. So, the positive. How does it move, or how does it run or move? Okay, so, for the width and the, the size, and for it being a kayak that you can stand up on, like right here, I'm standing up on it with my dog. For the size and the, the shape of the hull, it actually does pretty well. The stability when standing, pretty decent. I actually stood in that rear uh, tank well uh, during a live feed in uh, Facebook. I did that just yesterday. Uh, let's see. I'm looking at the... Okay. So, I'm trying to look through your messages. You weigh 240, would you be able to stand with ease? Um, I weigh roughly 195 and I'm standing pretty comfortably. I also stood when I had a cooler in the back. So between me and the cooler with the ice, it was a Ozark trail cooler. Um, I probably was getting pretty close to 240 pounds. Um, you know, between all my gear that was on the kayak. Uh, but I don't know. It depends on your, on your balance, but I feel like it doesn't take me a lot to, to balance. As long as I'm standing with a foot on each one of these pad areas and I don't put my head outside of the gunnels, so outside of the sides of the kayak, I think I could stand up quite easily and I wouldn't have to worry. Um, where did I get one? Okay, so as I said earlier, the company gave me one when I was at iCast. They said, go ahead, have fun with it, test it out. And then if you like it, tell your viewers about it or whatever. They really gave me no stipulations. Sun Dolphin has been great to work with. They gave me three kayaks and pretty much no stipulations, no contract, nothing. Just do what you want with it. And so they're, they're, not, they're not putting pressure on me to give a positive review. What I want to talk about is immediately I want to give one con so you don't think that I'm just ranting and raving on this. Um, one thing I will mention that I noticed, you see this rear tank well? There's no scupper back there. The next scupper is actually slightly under the seat right here. And so if you get water over the back, over the back of this, if you get water in this area, it doesn't come out very well. Granted, this hatch though is raised a little bit. So I haven't really had much water intrusion. So, I, I beat the heck out of this. I mean, I drag it, um, I threw it into a creek, I was having to drag it over top of logs, and the amount of water that I got in the actual hull was very, very, very minimal. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that. I actually have seen more uh, water get into the hulls of my Hobies than so far what I have experienced abusing this. And as you can see, this kayak is dirty. <laughs> so this is not some brand new kayak, some, some show kayak where, you know, you just have a guy sitting in it for the first time and just telling you, go buy this kayak. 
um, for the money, I think it's a pretty good buy because for a while there, Walmart was selling it at ridiculously low prices. I don't think you'll see those prices any longer um, because they were below map pricing, below like what they were pretty much supposed to be charging. I believe I saw them at Walmart for around $3.97, which if you see any of them for that price, definitely buy them. Um, but otherwise, I believe around $5.99 is the price on this. The seat has a high low position. Um, some people said that they had problems with the seat um, where like this area would expand out or something and it wouldn't lock in. I haven't had any seat issues. I'm six foot two, 200 pounds. I haven't had much issues. In terms of flexing, um, you know, this material does, does have some give, but sometimes some give doesn't hurt. I mean, it, it makes it to where, you know, if you hit something, it, it, it has a little bit of bounce or give to it. I don't know. Um, I, I haven't had any issues in terms of quality to where at the moment I'm afraid that, you know, I'm gonna sink or anything, like any, any failures. Uh, one thing I, I also maybe want to mention is, so the scupper holes, they're, they look big here, this top part does, but it's really like a pretty small hole. It's like a maybe a 3 8 I don't know, 3 8 to a half inch hole um, that is all the way through. So it's not a crazy um, scupper hole, but so far it's draining well um, it's draining decent enough that it's not causing an issue if you look up here in the front let me see about flipping okay if you look in the front here the hatches are raised up off of the deck so even if you get a little bit of pooling water that comes up over the front because there's no scuppers where my dog is sitting if you get water that comes up over the front it can run down here and go into the drains here um, it's not going to accumulate enough water to where it should come into the hatch. So that's pretty important. Um, let's see. Let's see what people are commenting. Make sure I'm addressing all these comments. What? How is it in, say, a 15 mile an hour wind? Um, 15 mile an hour wind? I mean, does decent, I think. I mean, it doesn't seem like it has too much of issues. Um, I think if you were standing and paddling, then it would be like I have, like with me when I'm standing and paddling on my paddleboard or on this, I become like a giant sail. So it probably wouldn't be fun to paddle in 15 mile an hour winds if you're standing, but if you're sitting down, I think you'll be fine. How good is it to go fishing? So for fishing, pretty good um, it, it has a lot of flexibility in how you rig it so let's take a look here at some of the, the stuff so up here if you were standing if you were standing you could drop your rods into here and they're they're in a really good position because your feet are right about here so if you just wanted to be standing and sight fishing and drop a rod in there and then pick up this one and fish with this one you could do that um, if you want to track mount anything you have a track mount here you have a track mount here right here i have a rail blaze a, a track adapter so i could put my camera mount there or i could put another rod holder there um, we got flush mount rod holders in the back on each side so you got four of the flush mount rod holders and then you have all these tracks right here and here to be able to add accessories to so this here is what I recommend and love on every kayak. It does come with this right here, which is a rod holder mount as well. And there's actually a rod holder that comes with it that drops into there. I don't know that I'll actually use that, um, but I guess it's a nice feature for some. Uh, the pegs are adjustable and they're filthy right now, but uh, basically, once I get all this dirt off of here, um, you squeeze right here and it slides up and down. See, this is how you know you're getting a good review because this kayak is absolutely a mess. Like it's filthy, it's full of dirt. It's a kayak that gets used and not like pampered. 
Um, what I really like about it too is the fact that from pretty much up in the bow all the way to the stern, it's recessed. Even underneath the seat, there is space underneath there. So it, it's kind of one continuous level from bow to stern. And so like if you have to load something really long on the kayak, you can run it on each side and it can run under the seat and be okay. Um, let's see, um, we got paddle bungees, so I can put my paddle there. Um, this is not related to the Boss, Sun Dolphin Boss, but this here is by far, so far, my favorite paddle. Especially if you're on a serious adventure, like what I was yesterday in uh, the Florida Creeks doing fossil hunting, which by the way, we found a mammoth tusk, which is pretty dang sweet. We found a, a Colombian mammoth uh, tusk. The paddle here, it has a hook and it has these uh, serrations on it. Why is that important? Well, when I was going through the creek areas, and that's how I got this all filthy, I was having to constantly grab onto logs, onto trees, and having that hook on there helped me position the kayak where I needed to. And then when I got out of the kayak to drag this, I was able to use my paddle to hook onto the handles of the kayak. So like the handles there, the handles here. So this thing here is like a tool. So, it, you know, if you're really going through some really rough areas, consider looking at this paddle. Um, you know, this paddle was given to me. Uh, Yak Gear actually gave this to me. Uh, but what I like about it too is it's a 200 and 230 centimeter paddle but it has adjustments here so you can actually add up to an additional 10 centimeters and you can feather it however you like uh, i saw another message come up here let me read that oh lex is leaving nice seeing you lex lex has a youtube channel as well him and i are friends and uh, he's collaborated with me in the past um, let's see I have looked, hoped to find one local, wanted to check it out, thanks for the review. Yeah, feel free to, after this video, feel free to comment with additional things you come up with um, for questions. But let's uh, let's take a look inside the, the hatch space because that's one of the things that's really nice with this. If you're doing like any camping trips or anything. So that's how the, the paddle keeper works. But right here is the hatch system. So you got two levers and in there is a bag. The bag has this right here, which is your rod holder that fits into that space that's underneath this paddle kind of right there. But then you also have this, which originally was slid onto here, which is your stand assist strap. So if you need help standing, you can grab onto this and pull yourself up but this actually came stock on it and it slid on there. And so it's a ruler built into the stand assist strap. I just took it off for the time being because I didn't want it to fall off while I was transporting it. But it's nice that they have a bag built into there because then your gear doesn't slide up and down the hall so you can easily access it. Um, let's look at the hatch in the back here. So the hatch behind the seat it also has a bag so that's pretty cool and it can come out you can pop it out so you can store stuff deeper in the hall i simply put a uh, uh, leash for our rods i just attach the leash to the bungee so so far this this kayak is exactly stock this kayak hasn't been customized or anything and I wanted to show it to you before I do any customization stuff to it. But you have a generous tank well. I mean, it's big enough that I fit a uh, 20 quart, uh, like roto molded cooler in the back here. If you guys haven't already, check out the, the videos I did of Rockadoc. There's a part one and a part two. Um, you know, it's just kind of a little mini adventure vlog but in one of the videos I show this particular kayak getting a little bit of use, that was the start of it. Um, I also used my inflatable paddleboard board, 
which I noticed the inflatable paddleboard videos aren't doing very well. Like you guys aren't watching them. So I'm wondering to maybe what your perceptions are on them. You know, are you still skeptical of them or, or, or what? Um, I actually am lending one out to my mother-in-law right now. I have two more at my house. Um, the, the inflatable paddle boards are sweet. Um, Blake actually, he was at Rockadoc with me. Um, he was in one of the videos even, but uh, a big branch blocked his face. <laughs> Sorry, Blake. Um, but anyway, the at Rockadoc, which was the big camping deal that we did with uh, Trip Smith, it, uh, it, it was full of people with inflatable paddle boards. And we put them through some pretty harsh environment areas and they're fine. I mean, I ran my paddleboard up onto, you know, some uh, submerged logs and I was like teeter tottering on them and it didn't wear a hole through the, the inflatable. In fact, there's like no mark on it. Um, so, and the, the big benefit to them is they're so lightweight. So that's just something else. I mean, those are two paddle crafts this one here and the inflatable paddle boards those are ones that I'm, I'm really using a lot lately I also still have my Viking Profish Reload Z um, I did sell the Hobie Tandem Island I'm sorry if you guys wanted more content on it but I have a baby coming in February and that was a lot of money tied up into one kayak and I paid my I paid for that one I paid for the Hobie Tandem Island all out of pocket so yeah blake you want one do you want what uh you want a paddleboard or you want a what what kind or a tandem island or the tandem island is great you know but for the money that you tie up into one it's a lot you know for the majority of you guys probably watching this video something like this you know for a kayak is going to be in more people's budget i mean these kayaks these days are, are starting to get pretty pricey and so I'm trying to do my best to start showing some kayaks that are maybe a little more affordable, maybe do some tweaks to them. Yeah, the paddle boards are, are, are awesome, Blake. So I thought that's maybe what you were talking about since at Rockadoc, um, there was so many of them. Uh, Trip Smith, who actually hosted Rockadoc at the Florida Caverns Park in Mariana, Florida, he loves inflatable paddle boards. I think he actually slept overnight on one um <laughs> in a video so that, that's pretty cool um but yeah this is a a pretty neat craft for the money and i mean really i just don't think you can beat it i mean it, it's gonna be tough to beat what i did do uh, i do this with every kayak and i did get this um so every kayak i get i end up putting gator guard patches on it and this isn't gonna be like some sponsored spiel like go buy Gator Regard patches, that's not the case. Um, but I do think they are the most wear resistant material to put on your keel of your kayak so that you can drag it around and, and truly use it and abuse it. Um, so the second I got this, right before I went to Rockadoc with this kayak, I ended up flipping it over upside down and I put a, a 12 inch strip of Gator Guard on the bow and I put a 24 inch strip on the stern. So that, that way if I'm grabbing onto the bow and I'm dragging this kayak, I, I don't have to really worry much about it. The kayak does come with a sacrificial uh, wear plate on the stern. So, oh is Austin on here? Hey Austin. So Austin actually helped me do some filming too with the videos that were uh, that were kicked out last. So if you saw the last two videos um, where we did the paddle camping trip and so Austin that commented was one of them that helped me film as well. So I had a bunch of people kind of helping out and I greatly appreciate it because it just helped me, you know, kind of tell the story a little bit better and get better perspectives. Um, Let's see. Look, see where they see where they dirty. I like it. It is very dirty. You know, I was like, the only problem with it being dirty is the doggy just got a clean, uh, just got like uh, trimmed up and clean. So the wife's probably gonna kill me a little bit for 
getting the dog filthy, but I don't know. Oh well. <laughs> but yeah, the Roxy, uh, Roxy here is my dog that I got, and we've had her for a while now. We adopted her, adopted her from the Humane Society. She's a little terrier mix, um, just a few years old, and she's been a phenomenal dog. So, but uh, the nice thing is actually you know, having such a flat deck and open space all the way throughout this kayak is you can have a dog. You can have a little kid maybe sit up on the front of the kayak. And I think it's plenty stable for that. Uh, the kayak weighs, I think around 78 pounds, but it doesn't feel like it. I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm just getting used to hauling kayaks, but um, it doesn't feel too bad at all. It feels easily manageable. I actually hauled this kayak by myself from the iCast Orange County Convention Center to the truck in the parking lot by myself. I mean, I like threw it onto my back and kind of just walked it out because they said, hey, you can have a free kayak, you know, here, here's the kayak, but I had to get it to my truck. <laughs> um, something else I'll mention here too um, that I'm kind of playing around with and testing is the new tight line anchor. So the tight line anchor is pretty sweet. It's this orange anchor here. It's ultra lightweight. I still can use the, the little zip tie method for it, but it's a folding anchor and I believe it weighs 14 ounces. Uh, you don't need to use a chain with it from what I can see. You just let out enough line like you should with an anchor. Um, you shouldn't just drop an anchor straight down and expect to be able to be anchored. Um, that takes a lot of weight to really anchor you if you're just dropping the line straight down. A line should be at an angle. But even at an angle without, without a chain on this lightweight anchor, it will grip in. It does a really good job. So um, I actually have some footage of that in my last video. Um, let me see, two videos ago. So two videos ago I ended up uh, doing some footage of this and you can see how even with an upward angle on the line it wanted to bite in and it bit into the uh, the sand very quick so it, it does a good job I'm, I'm happy with this also these can double as a bottle opener you can actually open up uh, bottles so pretty cool and uh, yeah I, I've been finding all sorts of uses for this now the reel that I'm using on this is I'm using a scuba reel. So I'll have a link to this same one in the video description after this video goes uh, live and or goes and gets uploaded. Once this video is uploaded, I'll have a link to everything you see in this video just so that that way you guys can easily find it if it interests you. Um, I don't do the hard sell stuff on this channel. Um, I do earn commission on things that uh, I do recommend but uh, yeah, I, I don't care. Would you delete your YouTube channel if, let's see, what did it say? Channel because the EU says it. If not, they'll come to your house to put you in jail. Would you delete your YouTube channel because the EU says it? If not, they'll come to your house to put you in No, I wouldn't delete my YouTube channel. There's freedom of speech, freedom of expression. No, I don't know where that, if you're getting that message on your YouTube channel, I mean, I don't know what type of content you're putting up that would cause that, but um, I do know that there has been some talk of blurring out other people's faces if you're gonna be uploading content, but the deal is there's cameras all over the world now. Like, if you're going out in public, just plan that you're probably going to get filmed at some point. Now, you know, that's just the world we live in. I, I, I don't know. I mean, we're always constantly being watched, I mean, with, with cameras. So, I, I don't know. But I do know that in, uh, in Europe, and uh, European countries, they have been talking about the possibility of invoking like a, a law where if you were uploading content you had to uh, make sure that it did not have people's faces in it that 
that weren't part of the filming crew. So like if I was out in public and there was people in the background, I'd have to blur out all their faces. I don't know that that went through. I, I don't know, but I know it was a talk specifically in the drone market. Uh, people that were uh, doing aerials with drones, um, they were talking about if that law went through, how it would mess up a lot of things. Long story short, I can follow up with you on that conversation maybe after this video. But uh, yeah, it seemed pretty crazy if that's the case. So anyway, that's a look at the kayak. And like I said, it's very stable. I actually was carrying this and pushing this over logs yesterday that were in the creek. And I hopped out onto some of the logs and then I pushed the kayak through the space, through like the dam. And then I hopped onto the back and I was standing on the back rear tray area. That's how stable it was. Hey, Spain looks beautiful. Um, we had an opportunity to go to Spain, but um, with this baby and stuff, we, we got kind of tight with the money. So we, uh, we didn't go, but someday. Let's see. Oh, you want me to see me stand up? Okay, so I'm gonna stand up right now here. I'm trying to figure out what the best angle is there, just for you to be able to see. So I got the seat in the high position right now, and I could use the strap, the stand assist strap, but no hands here. I'm able to stand up. So right now, I'm not paddling or anything. The wind is just blowing me around the canal area. So that canal there is back where my house is. We have an older home that we bought on the canal and we're fixing it up right now. I mean, some of the flooring isn't even in on the house. It's, it's kind of just a, a work in progress, but. So right here, you can kind of see I mean, I'm actually looking up at the phone, so my balance should be kind of thrown off a little bit, but I'm able to stand up on it. And you can get your feet kind of wide apart on this. I mean, I could probably put my feet a little bit wider apart yet, and that actually increases your, you know, your stability. But basically, as long as your head is in between the gunnels, for the most part, you shouldn't flip on this. I mean, unless you have really, really big waves coming or something, in which I probably wouldn't be standing much then anyway, um, just because there wouldn't be much benefit to, to me. So Roxy, hey Roxy, what do you think? What do you think of the kayak? <laughs> I think she likes it. She, she really doesn't speak much or talk much. <laughs> In fact, she rarely ever barks. So, in terms of uh, the material on the seat, it feels like a really durable material. It feels, you know, just like the, the fabric, feels the same, if not better, than many kayaks that I have seen that have this fishing style seat. So uh, the, the material feels great. I like it actually better than, uh, than many. So uh, for sure better than the Ascend and, and some of them. Um, I like it better than so far, like in terms of feel and perceived. I haven't sat in the new Pelicans yet with their new black uh, seat, but in terms of this, the, the perceived feel and quality, I like this here better than uh, the Pelican uh, seat. Now, for the money, I think the Pelican seat though is better than the Ascend. Um, I've seen the Ascend, like the, I think it's, what's it called, like the H12 or something that Bass Pro sells. That's probably pretty comparable to this kayak here in terms of length and, and, and shape. Uh, the Ascend seats 
don't feel as good. They feel cheaper. Um, this seat here feels very thick. It feels like a good material. It has a little bit of a rubberized coating to it or something. I don't know, but it's like mesh. It's breathable. It has a little bit of padding built into it. Um, so this is an all day seat. I could easily sit in this all day. Roxy, your hair is blowing everywhere. <laughs> so this is kind of a look at the area that I live in. It's kind of like all canals. Um, we have roads, but the canals are also like roads. So the canals have names and it's kind of cool. Um, people think I'm, I'm rich, you know, because I, I live on a canal home and stuff. Um, that's not really the case. You'd be, you'd be actually pretty surprised what we got our house for. Um, I, w I basically got this house, which is ocean access, sailboat access. We got it for less money than some of the houses we were looking at that were in South Dakota, in some of the town, city areas, surrounded by cornfields. I mean, so the house was not outrageously um, like high priced. Oh, some of these homes are. I mean, you look at some of these homes, some of these homes are massive. Like this home here is probably very expensive, but our home is a 1960s home. So anyway, I probably got to head back and uh, let's see here. I'll try to read some more of the, can you ask how it tracks? I couldn't get an answer. Tracks or tracks? Okay, tracks, I bet you meant tracks. Okay, so you were wondering how it tracks. It tracks very similar to the other 12 foot, you know, fishing kayaks that are wider. Um, it doesn't have a, uh, a built in like drop down skeg or, or rudder or anything. Um, you could probably add one very easily if you wanted to. But I'm going to see here if I can position this phone here. And I'm going to start paddling. So I have a crosswind going on right now, but even then it, it, it tracks pretty well. It tracks very comparable to 12 foot sit on top kayaks in general. Um, there really isn't a whole lot of wandering. And I will say when you're in an elevated seated position like this, I don't know if you're going from a sit inside kayak to a kayak like this, but on a sit on top kayak with an elevated seat like this, I find it's very easy to get really good paddle strokes that are high angle and to, to be able to have a lot of flexibility in how you paddle and maneuver this craft. So I don't know, I'm comfortable with how it paddles. I enjoy how it paddles. I don't feel like I'm having to do a lot of correcting. That, that's just me um, based on my perception of you know other kayaks I've paddled. I don't find this kayak to be a nuisance at all to paddle. Like if I want to go from point A to point B, I don't feel like I'm having to correct a lot to get to where I want to go. Um, you do have to take into consideration current, you know, wind and all that stuff. But for the most part, I think it does a good job. So hopefully that kind of helps you in terms of tracking. It's not a touring kayak. It's not like a a kayak that's going to be designed for long distance like um, treks you know so if you see those long slender sit inside kayaks those touring kayaks it's it's not in the same class as those in terms of um, tracking but it does a dang good job yeah i don't know what you have to compare it to so if you have another kayak tell me what your kayak is and i'll tell you whether or not i think it's going to be better or worse <laughs> um, but it's all relative tracking is kind of relative so if I had to give it a 0 to 10 
I would probably give it a six, but I would put a 10 on like a Viking Pro Fish Reload, which I have, or like a, on, a, on a catch, par comparable to the catch, probably pretty comparable to the catch. Maybe a hair better, in my opinion, just because they're slightly different hauls. It feels like it's a little bit better, but um, yeah, probably pretty comparable to that. What I like about it though is I can just stuff this haul of this kayak, I can throw a bunch of gear on the deck, and I can go. Um, that, that's what's appealing to me for this particular kayak. Today it's kind of hard for me to show you much because it's so windy and we got current going on because this is, these are ocean uh, channel waters. So we get high and low tides. So the tide's either coming in or it's getting sucked out of these canals. The catch has more drag in the water. Yeah, I mean, honestly, this thing's not bad to paddle. I mean, it really doesn't feel bad but I think it all depends if you're going from a kayak where you're sitting directly on the kayak and you have those little universal kayak seats or if you're already owning a kayak that has a nice fishing seat because there's a lot to be said about the comfort of fit, uh, paddling and, and whatnot from a kayak that has a nice seat. You just, you get a different angle to be able to put your paddle in and you just get better control I feel um, I, I don't know that I, that's just me uh, let's see here let's look durability the catch or the boss better durability I think it's gonna be comparable something many people don't know is the Sun Dolphin boss is actually made in the USA it's made right in, uh, I believe, it might be Michigan. I, I'd have to look, uh, but it's made in the USA, uh, Sun Dolphin is. Pelican, I believe, is made out of Canada. Um, but they're very comparable, I think, in terms of materials and, and the way they're made. They're both, um, they both have the seam right here on the side which I know on Pelicans at least, the seam is actually the strongest part on the boat. Most people don't know that. And I've actually seen cross sections where the seam is actually almost nearly twice as thick sometimes as the rest of the hull. The, the way that they make these kayaks is just a very efficient way to make kayaks. That's, that's why they do it. it. What I will say is I can tell you this right now, Compared to a Hobie, I've owned a few Hobies, this deck right here seems stiffer. It seems like it flexes less when I'm standing on it. So take that for what you will. Um, Pelican and Sun Dolphin both, they both have had stiffer decks for standing on. I don't know. The only point on this, like especially in this area right here, the only point I saw a little bit of flexing was back there, but you gotta figure they cut out the area for the hatch, and so maybe that caused a little bit of area to where having a 190 some pound person on maybe causes a little, little bit of flex. But otherwise, standing on the actual deck area where it's intended to be stood on, there is like very little flex. And I really like that because my Hobie kayaks had a lot of flex. Even my 6,700, actually, no, it was $6,900 Hobie Tandem Island. Even that kayak had more flex on the deck area, the top deck of the kayak, than what this does. This is much stiffer and it costs $599 MSRP. Now you can sometimes find it for less. So if we're talking about durability, the only area of durability that I think anyone would have any concern on maybe is if you're dragging it a lot. But on the back stern, this kayak has a bolt-on sacrificial like drag 
wear like protector. It has a skeg uh, keel protector. And so if you were dragging it, likely that, that sacrificial area that bolts on would wear first. What I did is I just put gator guard patches on the bow and stern and I still have that sacrificial plate that comes stock with the Sun Dolphin. That's the only area I have of concern on this actual kayak at the moment. And I pretty much took care of it because I put the Gator Guard patches on the areas that are likely the spots that will get more wear. Gorilla tape worked for me, but it was just kind of like a constant reapplying and stuff. You know, like, you know, if I hit like rocks or sharp oysters, um, because we got some pretty dang sharp rocks here in uh, the saltwater environments. They get like the shell uh, reef type growths. And so like the, those shells really can cut in pretty well. Um, but I mean, yeah, Gator Guard gave me a, a whole bunch of kits to play with. And so I didn't have any vested like money into them but once I started using them, I really liked them. And now I'm kind of hooked on them to the point where I probably will buy more. I buy the large nine by 12 kits. And then what I do is I cut them into about two to three inch width wide strips. So if they're nine inches wide, I cut three strips and I'll have three by 12, three by 12, three by 12. And I can lay those strips onto the bow and stern of the kayak it gets some pretty good coverage. It's not a full length from bow to stern keel protector, but I just put it on the areas where it's gonna get the most wear. And that seems to do pretty good job. So, <clears throat> um, other things, let's see. I will say um, like these handles, they do like rotate a little bit, but they seem solid still. I mean, they, they rotate a little. I don't know if there's like a backing plate, but you can see it kind of rotates there a little bit. I don't know. I mean, could it be an issue? Possibly. I haven't seen any issue with it yet, and it's pretty high above the water line, so I'm not overly concerned. But like I said, for the money, I think this kayak is a buy. At $599 or less, I think it's a pretty good deal. I'm happy with it. Um, this one here is the camo. So it has like a little bit of a breakup pattern between like a olive and like a green and stuff. Uh, so it blends in pretty well with most of the environments that I'm in. Um, the thing I really like the most though, absolutely the most is I do love the rod holders being there. Because when you're standing up and you're fishing, being able to drop a rod back down in when you're standing, it's in the perfect position. It's, it's pretty far to drop in from a seated position here, but it's really, I think, designed for when you're standing up right here to be able to drop a rod back down. So you can fish with two rods while standing. So that's one of the things I really like about it and I'm, I'm very happy with. Um, that, that pretty much sums it up. I'm going to look here at what we got, uh, comparable to the cash, gorilla tape. I'm, I'm reading some of the comments here on what people are saying. So compared to the catch, honestly, comparing it to the catch 120, I would probably buy this over the catch 120. Um, I have not owned a Catch 120, but I paddled on them and stuff. And based on the price, this one I think is a little bit less. So I think you, not even that, even if they were side by side for the same price, I'm thinking I'm still probably interested more in the Sundolphin Boss. Just because I like the way it is laid out. I like the way the deck is laid out. I think it works better for me. I'm doing a lot of drifting. I haven't been doing much paddling because I got to hold the phone. Eventually, I got to get a phone mount again. Um, I don't know where mine went through this whole baby process of uh, taking my office and, and 
making it into a baby room, I ended up uh, losing a lot of my stuff. I don't know where it is. Uh, so is it the same boat as the Ozark Trail? It does appear to be the exact same boat. It seems like Walmart just ended up like rebranding it. Uh, so I don't know how that works, if they license it, but it appears to be the same boat as the Ozark Trail. That's, that's what I'm seeing. I'll end up uh, in the video description after this video. I will end up doing a close comparison. I'll end up looking at it and I'll uh, I'll put a link to also to any Ozark Trail um, kayaks that resemble this. Which I remember there's one Ozark Trail kayak that looks dang near identical to this. And I believe it's like, I believe they were selling it for under 400 bucks. Just under 400 bucks. So, yes, I believe, yes, the, the Ozark Pro Angler, that's the name, yep. I, it, it seems like it's an identical kayak. Um, I don't know, uh, I know that Sun Dolphin is carried by Walmart, and I don't know if they have an agreement and they like are rebadged it or they have a licensing deal. I don't, I don't know wh how that works, but it looks like an identical kayak to me. Um, but either way, whether you find an Ozark Trail Pro Angler or a Sun Dolphin, you know, Boss 12, they, if they are indeed the same kayak, which I think they are, I think it's a heck of a deal. I'm sitting on the Sun Dolphin branded one. I like it. Um, you know, I've owned really expensive kayaks. I still have a $2,000 kayak at my house. I have had, I, I recently sold. Uh, the Hobie Tandem Island, which was $6,900. I sold it actually for a loss. I lost $1,900 on that thing, owning it for one year. I lost, I sold it for $5,000, the 2017 Hobie Tandem Island. So that hurts, you know. Um, I could buy a lot of these for that money. <laughs> For the amount of money I lost, I could buy a lot of these and I could have the whole entire family out on them. So you just gotta look. Is it worth it, you know? Now granted, there's not much that, you know, other crafts that can do what the Hobie Tandem Island can do, but if you're just looking at, just in general, entertainment for a family, you know, a lot of money I lost on that Hobie Tandem Island. I could have bought a lot of these and got the whole family out on them, do camping trips, you know, do other things. So I, I'm trying to be realistic. I'm trying to think like the way you guys would think. I'm trying not to, to lose track of myself when this channel is growing and growing and growing. I, I want to be able to still think like the general consumer and think, would I buy that kayak? Would I spend my hard-earned money on it? That's, that's what I'm trying to do. So if you think for any second that I'm not being genuine, call me out on it. Let me know because I do need people to keep me in check. My wife keeps me in check. I try very hard to, uh, to give honest non-biased reviews and I try not to um, yeah over embellish so let's see how wide is the Sun Dolphin boss I'm gonna have to put the specs in the video description I don't know off the top of my head I, I just don't um, but gosh I don't know looks it's pretty decently wide I don't necessarily want to say a number and then confuse and, and lead people astray but it's a pretty decent, love the hood ornament. Yeah, 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 she's pretty cool. Hey, Roxy. Hey, come here, come here. Oh, okay. David just answered. He says it's 33 inches. I was thinking 34, but uh, yeah. So 33 inches wide. And I believe it's 78 pounds for the weight. Um, last I checked, which is pretty close to the Ascend H12 and other comparable kayaks. So my dog is actually pretty comfortable on here too. She usually is slightly skittish and kind of freezes. If 
500 pound capacity, which that's pretty dang good. I, I have not got close to 500 pounds to be able to confirm that, but I have probably gotten 250, 250 pounds for sure on this. And it didn't even remotely seem like I had any loss in uh, performance. Uh, earlier, Silent Gesture, earlier we had talked about tracking. Um, I feel like it, it tracks pretty comparable to other um, 12 foot sit on top fishing kayaks. I don't feel like I'm having to correct with my paddle a lot. So I don't feel like I'm having to constantly correct it. it if I want to go from point A to point B, I don't feel like I'm constantly making corrective paddle strokes to try to get it back on course. Um, so, you know, that's all a perception deal kind of deal. Like people, it's all perceived and it's based on also what you have had for a previous kayak. So if you have a previous kayak, that's a touring kayak like a Carolina or, you know, uh, Prejean or, you know, one of those narrow, sleek, sit inside kayaks then your tracking on this compared to that is going to suck and you're going to be like wow this is terrible tracking but if your other kayak it you know it, it just depends on what you have for a previous kayak to really make a determination but my perceived perception of this kayak and how it tracks is that it tracks plenty good for me and what i'm doing um, going on these little adventures, paddling up these creeks, going you know across small little lakes, uh, doing bay little bays, I, I would not worry about it. The seat, it's very comfortable. I'm very relaxed on it. Um, it has ban a band here, so uh, so it has like a band right here. So um, I don't know if you're a really wide guy really you know broad guy it could possibly dig in a little bit i don't know that's maybe one one thing to consider but um the seat is otherwise really good i think i'm very happy with it and uh, i think the seat is better quality than uh, many that i've seen uh, i think it's better than the ascend how many positions does the seat have? So the seat, it doesn't have like lumbar support like or anything crazy built in, but you basically have this adjustment here which lets you recline the seat back or bring it forward. And then you have a high and low position. So you can drop the seat into a lower position. That's the two settings that I know it has. Um, there's also, I guess the seat does have some bands on the back. And that bungee there is so that when you're transporting it, you clip it to that pad eye there and it holds the seat flat so that it doesn't catch the wind. <clears throat> um, let's see, anything else on the seat? Um, basically the seat just has really good material. I mean, it feels good. Do you feel like it's stable enough to change seat positions while on the water. Um, I'm 200 pounds. I think I could drop this down. Yeah. Um, you know, if you have really bad knees though, um, part of being able to drop the seat and, and change the seating position, you know, would probably be, I'd probably have to do it like, you know, sitting in front of the, the seat or get on my knees on these pads and then drop it down that way. I mean, because you really don't, you don't drop the seated position. See these little notches? You don't drop it while you're sitting on it. So you probably have to stand and then pop it out of there and drop it down. So now, now I'm actually in the lowest position. I'm sitting low. And you can see there, the, the bar is in that low groove versus the high groove.
So hopefully that explains a lot about the kayak. You can ask questions after this video and I'll make sure to try to address it. I will probably also do a follow-up video that is recorded, edited, and more thorough maybe on this kayak. But I wanted to do something live because it gives me an opportunity to talk to you guys and it lets me know what you are interested in regarding this kayak, what type of questions you have, it just, it, it, I, I like live. I, I, would, I wish I could do all my videos live and just constantly talk to you guys and just answer questions. Um, the video quality might not be as great live, depending on cell signal, but I like doing live. I like connecting with you guys, answering questions. I like just sitting on the kayak, talking about it, letting you guys know what I think, testing out stuff that you guys ask about. Um, that's what I enjoy doing. Hey, thanks, Philip. So, yeah, I'll end up ending this live stream. If you guys haven't already, consider subscribing. Um, keep an eye out in the video description below this video. I will end up, uh, you know, having more information. I'll have maybe links to this kayak and comparable kayaks, um, kayaks that I think are, are similar to it, uh, such as that Ozark Trail Pro Angler. And then uh, once this video is uploaded to, um, after at the end, it'll end up likely having other videos that you can check out as well that are recommended. Uh, the hull, I think it could be easily repaired. I, I'm not overly worried about it. Um, I think you easily could repair it. And the folks at Sun Dolphin, like I said, Sun Dolphin's made in the USA, cool group of people. I'm sure if you didn't have any material, to patch up your kayak with, you could probably reach out to them. Maybe you would have to pay for like shipping and handling for some material to patch up your kayak with. But if you had to repair it, I'm pretty sure that Sun Dolphin would be reasonable and help you out because I've talked to these, these guys, the guys that work for them, and they're a pretty good group of people. Uh, Sun Dolphin is, um, in terms of dealers, it's managed, I believe, by a company called Hemisphere Designs but that's getting into a whole another story we'll follow up on this later take care blake take care everyone else um you know it was nice talking with you guys and stay tuned for the next video check out the video description after this video and later now i just got to figure out how to stop this live feed bloopers <laughs>